thought of all the things that we've seen at Oshkosh 2012, there's one thing that keeps coming up. You hear it whispered here and there. You sit down for lunch at some of the picnic tables. Have you seen the Cub Simulator? You're over in the Aviators Club. Yeah, have you seen that Cub Simulator? Really cool. Or you know, you're just out in the side. Damn it, I crashed the Cub Simulator. The Cub Simulator has been a big hit. But uh, I, I got to tell you, where did this come from? Well, y you know, Jim, this is the very first simulator that we have ever built that we didn't have an order for. So. Uh, in conjunction with Piper, we decided to bring up something special for the 75th anniversary of the Cub. It was just a fun project to work on. It's something, you know, every once in a while you have to take a step back from the day-to-day -day grind, and everybody got involved with this. Even people like A2A Simulations, who develops flight models and stuff like that, they got involved with us in developing this simulator. If you'll take a look, Hartzell came over and put their stickers on the prop. So it's actually continued to grow and grow, and this has actually been so much fun to do. It's based on our standard MX2 simulator platform. And so about two months ago, we decided to do this. And so we built it, had it painted yellow, put the decaling on. We got our engineers involved to write some special firmware and software. And so, you know, the entire process probably took us two months. But granted, since we had a great place to start from and some nice partners to work with, that's what allowed us to accelerate it over the normal development of a sim. What did it take to build an authentic Cub simulator? Because one of the things I found out, I, I flew it the other day, uh, got a couple of passable wheel landings out of it, and it did really feel like a Cub. A couple of things. One is, in our normal simulators, we spend an enormous amount of time developing flight models. In this case, we found a partner in A2A Simulations that had already spent so much time and had done so much work in developing that. And then it became one of those challenges of, okay, can we put in, you know, a throttle quadrant that mimics it? Can we make the prop actually start it? And those things start to snowball. And yes, it's work, but in the context of what we were doing here, we weren't short of people volunteering to help out in the development of this device for the show. Is there any commercial future to the Cub Simulator? Well, you know, if you'd asked me that question a week ago, I'd said no. But the device you're looking at now has been sold. <laughs> it will end up in Hernando, Mississippi right after the show. And based on the feedback we've had from this, I don't think this will be the last one we build. From the reaction we've had from people at the show, people who learned in Cubs, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, up until even some people who are still learning with Cubs. I think there actually may be a market for this. So uh, if nothing else, we'll build one more for ourselves. But I think there may be a few more that you see scattered around the country in the not too distant future. So as divinely inspired as the Cub idea has been, what's on the back burner for later? Well, now since they've seen the tail dragger, some of this, there's a Waco that somebody wants us to build. And so, you know, I, I'm not exactly sure what will come next, but, um, um, and there's even some other top end stuff. So um, you, you have an open invitation to come visit us and um, end of October, November, if you want to come see the, uh, the Cessna Mustang simulator, you're welcome to do that as well. I'm really looking forward to it. Todd, thanks so much for spending time with AeroTV and we look forward to the next uh, amazingly unconventional idea from Redbird. Jim, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Aero TV is brought to you by... Avidyne is the brand of choice for pilots who want innovative, easy-to-use avionics. And the new IFD 540 and 440 FMS GPS Navcoms set a new standard for ease of use and simplicity. As plug-and-play replacements for legacy 530 and 430 series navigators, the hybrid touch user interface of the IFD 540 and IFD 440 makes it much easier to access the information you want while reducing head down time and making flying more enjoyable. Now you have a choice, and the choice is easy, Avidyne.